guys, welcome to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much, as usual, for watching my YouTube channel. Now, guys, this is the fifth video out of 11. So, we are talking about nurse empowerment in this series. If you have not seen the other videos, not to worry. You can just look below in the description section and you can see all the details on how you can watch the other videos. You will also see information about the scholarship that I'm giving away, which is to help empower LPNs and RNs to get their BSN. Guys, there's no better way to empower yourself than position positioning yourself with the right degree for your career. With that said, let's get right into the video and I will see you there. Step number four, dream big, take small steps. Have you guys ever set a dream and then not fulfilled it? Or set a goal and not followed through? So you might have made something called a New Year's resolution and we all have very well-meaning New Year's resolutions. We take an inventory of what we did last year and we say what we want to do differently this year. A lot of people put on their New Year's resolutions to lose weight, to go to the gym, to eat healthy, to be more loving, all kinds of things. And the list goes on and on. But sometimes what happens is we look at the dream and we look at where we want to be and our goal seems almost unachievable. So we, in a sense, get overwhelmed and we give up. I know this has probably never happened to you, but it definitely has happened to me. <laughs> there is a way to dream though and a way to dream big and to stay balanced. So you want to basically have a vision for your life, which you can call whatever you want. You can call it a dream. A goal and a dream is essentially a vision. A vision for a better version of your life and a better version for yourself. What you have to realize is essentially a dream or vision is basically your life's purpose. This is almost your life force. What gets you out of bed? What keeps you going? What gives you energy? Why you're doing what you're doing? I mean, take for example, have you ever seen anybody do what you think is absolutely impossible? I'll be honest with you, I have the YouTube channel and I share a lot of study tips with nurses and I get emails from nursing students that blow my mind. I got an email the other day from a single mother of three children who claimed that she had very little home support but she wanted to provide a better life for her children so she did whatever it took and she got herself through nursing school, mind you, with honors. So when we have a dream that is in a sense bigger than us or something that we'll do anything for, then it really doesn't matter what obstacles get in the way because we're determined to succeed and we're determined to do this. So we will figure out a way to make it work. The key is to find a dream that is truly ours. A lot of times we look at other people and we look at their success you know, you might say, I want to be like them. But in the process, you might have to neglect a very big part of yourself. I mean, for example, going after things or going after a big house or going after nice jewelry or things like that, they're all good things if that's what your dream is. But if it's really not deep in your heart and that's really not what gets you out of bed in the morning, then it's not gonna be something that's at 5 a.m. when the alarm clock goes off on your day off. It's not gonna get you out of bed. So you have to have something that really is going to just give you so much energy. I really wanna say for my mothers and fathers, you actually know what a dream is more than anybody else because you have a vision for your child, that vision that your child can succeed and grow and dream and become what they wanna become. And you probably get so much excitement out of seeing that. So have you noticed that you will just do anything and everything for your child? I mean, if your child comes to you at nine o'clock at night and says you know, that they need help with their homework or they need to eat something, you'll do whatever it takes to help the child out. Or take for instance, when the child is sick in the middle of the night. Do so you wake up in the middle of the night and help them feel better, give them medications, rock them back to sleep, whatever it takes, right? And then you might go to work for a full day. So what I want you kind of to do is just to view yourself like a child. Now, I know that some of you in here might be saying, Caroline, I am no spring chicken, but listen, can I just be 100% real with you? I know that I'm young, but what I have seen from working in the hospital, and hopefully you've experienced some of the same in your facility, you will see people that defy the odds. And let's say, for example, the average 75-year-old or the average 80-year-old is lying on their deathbed. Well, how many 75 or 80-year-olds do you know that are vital and full of life? Or how many times have you given care to a patient that is 90 or even 100 years old and just wants to get on with their life? These things do happen. And I'm here to tell you that it is our responsibility to 
plan on a long life. Now, whether or not life gets cut short for one reason or the other, we have no control over that, of course. But I do believe that it is our responsibility to plan on longevity, to say, you know what? I'm gonna live, I don't know, let's say something crazy, 120 to 150 years. Now, I know that's like out there, but it's your responsibility to always find things that are going to interest and excite you and to always have a vision that you're looking forward to and that you're working towards. The best kind of visions, like I was mentioning before, are visions that you would do absolutely anything for because these visions, in a sense, are going to be giving you so much energy. So the key is to start small. And like I mentioned before, remember, improvement in one is improvement in all. So you want to get in the habit of making sure you're making improvements in every area of your life. Becoming the best nurse that you can be is vital. You cannot put half of the effort into being a nurse and then put half of the effort into being successful and expect amazing results. It just doesn't work that way. You've really got to find a way to give you your all for everything. Maybe the plan for you is going to be to get that body that you've always dreamed of having. Get that health that you've always dreamed of having. So you might want to go back to your healthiest weight. The best way I think to ensure long-term success is to track your progress. I love using Google Calendars. The Google platform is obviously free for everyone to use, especially if you're using the Google Calendar. I know that they charge if you use a lot of space, but the Google Calendar is a wonderful resource that you can use to help you track your progress. Tracking your progress ensures that little by little you are making your goal. And when you slide away from the goal, it's easy to say, well, I messed up for a day or two, but look, I was good for three weeks. Let me just get back at it. When you're dreaming, let's take for instance to lose weight or to get healthy. One thing that I think is an absolute must for you to do is to buy a dress or buy a suit that is way too small for you. But you would fit in it if you were in your ideal weight. Because looking at a scale is really not that amazing of a feeling because it's just a number. But what if you were able to put on the dress or put on the suit and then you walked around and everyone saw you and was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? What have you been eating? What have you been doing? You look absolutely fabulous. So. Having a vision like that is a lot more powerful than just looking at a scale. So another dream that you might have is to better your finances. So in order to get more of a grip on your finances, my advice for you would be to instead of focusing on getting out of debt or just making your bills, focus on having abundance. I mean, think about it. If you compare those two, getting out of debt to having abundance, the difference is getting out of debt means you can stay home in comfort. Having abundance means that you can go on a vacation with your family. So all of these things are possible to start right where you are. So for abundance, obviously looking at all of your expenses is a must. Do you have to spend the money there? Do you have to spend the money here? One of the best things that I ever did was um, I'm not from a very wealthy family at all. And so when it came time for me to get married, it was basically the cost of the wedding was going to come down to me and my husband. So what I did was I found out what little I actually needed to survive. So I've always put first and foremost healthy foods. Those are my non-negotiables. I found out that Vaseline was actually a great chapstick and super cheap. Hair products were actually not that necessary and I could even cut my own hair. So those are just a few ideas of some things that I did and we were able to have an amazing wedding. And to this day, I'm actually quite frugal with a lot of different things. But the way I did it was having the vision of a beautiful wedding and having all of my guests feel very comfortable and welcomed and taken care of was a very inspiring dream for me. So I was able to accomplish it. Now, when dream overload sets in and you feel like you're not going to get there, you're not gonna make your goal, there's no way, there's no way you're gonna get promoted for the position, it's not looking good, you're just kind of in a rut, let me just tell you, that is going to happen. And are you so happy that you tuned in today? If there is something that I know 100% for sure, you are going to have feelings where you feel like you are backsliding and it doesn't feel good. But during that time, it's basically questioning time. The easy part is to dream. The dream takes 10 seconds to do because we all dream. I mean, come on, think about it. We all wanna look beautiful. We all want to be out of debt and have 
have you know everything that we need and want. We all want to be successful on our jobs and we all want to be recognized on our job. We all want those things. So what makes a difference between people that fail and people that actually stick it out? The main difference are those periods where nothing seems to be happening. I wish that I could give you a foolproof method where you would only go completely straight up, but it doesn't exist. Success, reaching your goals, reaching your dreams is like this. You go up and you make a little bit of plateau. You go up a little bit more and you plateau. Those plateaus are going to define you. What are you going to do during those times? Are you going to go to all of your friends and say, I can't believe this happened. I can't believe I didn't get promoted. I can't believe I didn't get a raise. I can't believe this happened. I can't believe that happened. Are you going to be completely angry about it and let it affect your job, which will affect your home life, which will affect every other area of your life? Or are you going to say, hmm, what can I learn from this period? Now, there are a few things that I've learned through plateaus. Plateaus, I think, are, are what life is all about, actually. Because during those times, you learn skill sets, you learn so many different things that you wouldn't learn if you were having a great time. Because when you're when you're happy, when things are going your way, you're just kind of like skipping through life. Like you're not thinking too much, or at least I'm not thinking that much. I'm having fun because things are going well. But when things are not going well is when you actually have to stop and say, what's going on? And you have to face whatever is coming your way and, and judge where your next step is going to go. Plateaus are actually magical experiences if you can look through it that way. One, some things that I've learned through some of my hardest plateaus is patience and persistence. No matter what you see on the outside, let's say that you know another nurse is getting more recognition than you, but you're doing way more than him or her, which can happen, um, just stick through it or if somebody else got promoted or selected for the position that you applied for that you're actually more qualified for then you can learn to just stick it out and keep being your best because an opportunity will come to you or you will find the right opportunity. So the other thing that I really learned during this time is faith. Now despite what your religious beliefs are, this is by no means a religious program. Having faith that eventually things are going to work out and eventually things are going to work out for your good is absolutely essential. You know, if you really think about it, just do an experiment with me. I used to do this a really long time ago when things were actually extremely hard for me. I used to look at my hands and I was taking anatomy physiology at the time, which I know I'm speaking to the medical field here, so most of you have probably taken anatomy physiology, but that class was really almost like a spiritual experience for me. So I used to look at my hands and think about all the millions and maybe trillions of things that had to happen in order to make this hand work. You know, so just do it. Just take a look at your hand. And when I was looking at my hand, I would just think about it and I would say you know how is it possible that all of this goes on without me having to do anything at all so why am I worried why am I worried about failing or why am I worried about not making it or why am I worried about not losing the weight because those worries are energy and if you have too many worries you're more likely to give up and what I found and what I do hope you find too is that your biggest fears actually don't exist your biggest fears are figments of your imagination just like your dream is a figment of your imagination but at least the dream is going to be something positive. It's going to be something that's going to make you a better person and a happier person in the long run. So during these periods of plateaus, just have faith that even when you don't feel like it, if you're making the right steps, things are gonna work out. And I really believe that they will. So keep going in there, keep doing your best, and have a new energy. So let's break it down. So I hope maybe by this time you're thinking about a dream that you have for your life. Maybe it's a dream to have X amount in the bank. Maybe it's a dream to get, the, get a position at your organization. Maybe it's a dream to win an award or a recognition. Maybe it's a dream to get the passion back that you once had for your patients and to build a connection with them and to share their lives with them and to get love from your job again. Or maybe it's a dream to start something on the side, something small. I met a nurse the other day that makes the most beautiful little name badge holders. And she does it on the side and obviously she brings a lot to work. And she gets so much joy out of seeing us wear them that uh, it's, it's really just priceless for her. And it actually gives her a new energy for going to work. And I'm not telling you to sell things at work just in case that's against your policy. But, um, you know, just have something that 
just gives you passion and love. Okay, so I'm all about big dreams, but I'm also all about taking small steps. Your exercise for right now is to write down some subtle shifts that you can do right now. Literally, when you leave this video seminar, things that you can do right now. I hope you've already thought about your dream, but think about those small steps and subtle shifts that you can take to ultimately make that dream a reality one day. All right, I'll see you in the next video.